Imagine New York City without traffic lights. All the cars are self-driving. There's no need to stop and go at a traffic light because all the routes have been calculated and recalculated as needed so that not only will they avoid collisions, but they can also take us to our destinations as fast as possible. There are no gas stations because energy is harvested from renewable resources such as the sun, wind, pressure sensors from roads and pavements, even from sounds and vibrations. Energy is harvested and distributed intelligently to balance out consumption. A truly sustainable city of the future. If there is a fire or medical emergency, first responders can be prioritized, obstacles automatically moved out of their way so that they can reach patients, victims, medical buildings, fire stations. These can all save lives. But there might hardly be medical emergencies because body sensors and monitoring body sensors can detect whether a health crisis is about to occur. Building fires? Home sensors can detect gas and heat, automatically triggering very targeted fire retardants so that they are extinguished before you even notice. These are visions of the future that IoT can give us, the Internet of Things. IoT is the idea of connecting not just devices, but also things to the Internet so that we may collect information about the world and make decisions based on that information to make the world more efficient. We actually hardly need to be creative to imagine all of this. There are plenty of sci-fi movies for reference. In fact, we typically get two very different versions of this future, one of a highly advanced technological utopia and another, a bleak picture of the human race and society controlled and or destroyed by technology. Many worry that with IoT making all of the decisions for us and everything around us with a goal of optimizing everything, humans will just become mindless entities ushered along by technology, stripped of what makes us humans. In the movie Wall-E, humans are just big babies being carried around by their hover chairs everything done for them by robots. However, either of these visions seem very far off when we see devices like these. Flip-flops that can play ads for the company. So instead of avoiding telemarketers, we're actually going to wear them. Forks that can mask slurping sounds. We have a couch that can tilt and vibrate, enhancing your movie experience, just like in those immersive cinemas, except that there's a noticeable delay between the movie and the couch, so it's really just preventing you from eating your popcorn in peace. And we have a trash can with a camera on the lid that takes pictures of the contents of your trash bin and uploads it to Facebook for no reason. Let's put aside for a moment the question of whether these devices needed to be invented and focus on what IT is about. IoT is not just about connecting devices, but also in making decisions so that these devices operate in efficient ways and improve our lives. And the more of these devices we connect and enable, the more optimized those decisions can be. For example, a smart home can only save energy within the home, but a community of smart homes, we can create a sustainable community. Excess harvested energy from a house that gets a lot of sunlight can be redirected to a house that is under a shade. Uber of everything could be implemented. A lot of us are fans of ride sharing, food and package delivery, grocery shopping. How about extending that to dog walking, home improvements, errands, handyman services? The point is, it's not the individual gadgets, but the services that we can create through the collective IoT capabilities. And with each device that we connect and enable, we have more and more ways for the digital world to interact with the physical world. So I invite you to think of this process of developing IoT capabilities as building an infrastructure, a programming interface, through which we can develop applications that have much greater impact for the future. And you'll probably ask, what are those applications? Well, honestly, my answer is I don't know. And I believe it is okay to not know. 
In fact, it is because we don't fully know that what makes IoT such a promising technology. And I'll tell you why I think that. What are your favorite computer applications? Microsoft Word, Excel, Facebook? Maybe you like to play video games on your laptop or listen to music on your tablet. Whatever those applications are, when the software developers create them, they are decomposed or compiled into the same or similar instructions that are part of the computer's instruction set. Think of it this way. A car can do many things. It can take you to work, to the store, on vacations. Any route that you come up with can be decomposed or compiled to a series of basic actions the car can do. Move forward at a specified speed, turn right at a specified angle, open the passenger door. Any route can be decomposed into these basic set of actions. You can think of it as the car's instruction set. If you are in your desktop or laptop right now, there's a good chance that any application that you're running is composed of instructions from what is called the x86 instruction set. Well, guess what? x86 was first introduced in 1985. The developers of x86 probably did not know that someday an application called Zoom is going to save us from face-to-face -face meetings during a pandemic, and internally, it consists of instructions from x86. So our IoT devices are implementing capabilities and infrastructure, adding instructions to our instruction set. So that someday, we can create sequences and combinations of these instructions to create applications that we haven't even thought of yet. In a sense, we are building a programmable world. This programmable world, like computers, have two major components, hardware and software. And they interoperate elegantly through a well-defined instruction set. You can think of it as a contract, where the hardware says, these are the set of physical actions I can do. The software side of things is the sequences, repetitions, combinations of these instructions to form a program. It's not unlike how we can create wonder stories out of the words in our languages and vocabulary. We form sentences, entire conversations, by creating combinations and sequences of these words. This is just like how we can create combinations and sequences and repetitions of instructions in the computer's instruction set to create a program. In this analogy, the words are the instructions, the stories are the applications. To support this vision of creating a programmable world, we need to build the hardware. That means adopting the enabling technologies of IoT, which includes identification, sensing, communication, computation, and actuation. Identification is essential because in order to interact with a device or an object, it needs to be identifiable and distinguishable from any other object, even of the same kind. Sensing is necessary because that is how we get information from the object, such as location, temperature, humidity. Communication is needed because we need to communicate that information for processing, and any decisions that are made out of that processing needs to be communicated back to the device. And just like how we need a brain to receive information and make decisions, we also need computation for IoT so that optimal decisions can be made based on the data that we collect. Actuation is akin to our ability of changing the state of our physical environment, such as moving items around or even walking to a different location. We need IoT devices that can administer physical actions such as this in order to implement our optimized decisions. The software side of things, in the context of this instruction set analogy, are the applications and services that we can create using these hardware capabilities. So, look beyond the toaster that can print the weather on your toast and see the identification, sensing, networking, computation, and actuation capabilities that have been added to this heating device. A common question I ask when you know, we see these devices, do we really need that? Well, in most cases, my answer is no. What I don't hear 
is people asking, what new capabilities has this added to our instruction set? So I invite you to not focus on the current application, but focus on two things. One, the role the development of this device has played in advancing technology. And two, the ability, instruction, or action it has added to our instruction set. Consider how the development of this device has led us to create robust, waterproof, energy efficient components that have very small form factors. And also think of the additional way that this device has provided us to digitally interact with the physical world. So let's not focus on the current application, but also look beyond that, see what it could become and see how it can contribute to our vision of a technological utopia. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, this accelerated the adoption of automation in many of our industries, including manufacturing, transportation, retail, parcel delivery. These industries benefited from the fact that before the pandemic, we already had foundations for these technologies in place. When an unforeseen crisis arose, we had the foundations to expand and create services to respond to unanticipated demands. I'm not saying that we should just welcome useless, intrusive devices into our homes, our cities, our hospitals. We have every right to be apprehensive. These devices can become ripe with vulnerabilities, riddled with avenues for exploiting security and privacy. In 2016, large portions of the internet went down. Netflix, Twitter, CNN. Because of denial of service attacks due to this malware called the Mirai, which started in internet enabled digital cameras and DVRs. In 2017, the FDA confirmed the implantable cardiac devices can be hacked, such as pacemakers, malicious actions done to them, such as depleting batteries and administering incorrect pacings. We periodically hear in the news about our video systems being hacked, baby monitors, home security systems, webcams. However, as these vulnerabilities are discovered, their fixes are developed. I believe this is part of the development process. And no doubt, security and privacy needs to be integrated to this process from the start. Consider an IoT program that we may create for a factory. If toilet paper supply at store X is low, increase toilet paper production, deploy delivery to X. Here, we can assume that a factory can just use an instruction to check the supply level of toilet paper at a store. There's also another instruction to increase the priority level of production. And then there's a separate instruction to deploy delivery to some store. In the store, employees do not need to count toilet paper because each one is located and identified. And yes, if we added Wi-Fi to toilet paper, we will probably ask, do we really need that? However, in this example, toilet paper crisis is avoided because production and consumption is balanced out in real time. Here's another program. If low level serotonin, play Let It Go in flip-flops, print your wonderful in toast. Remember that the nice thing about this is not that my breakfast will cheer me up when I'm down, but that we can easily create such a program once the infrastructure is in place. Just as easily, I can have the hot tub turn on while I'm coming home and body sensors detect that my pulse and respiratory signals indicate that I'm stressed and fatigued. Even more exciting is what we don't know. Someone creative could come along and create a program that will address all of our stress factors. If and when a new need arises, such as the needs that came up when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, we have the capability of creating a program that will address those. It remains to be seen which IoT services and devices of the future will be deemed necessary and useful, and which ones will be deemed silly and useless and even harmful. However, 
What we do know is the full potential of IoT can only be realized the more devices we have that have the capabilities of identification, sensing, networking, computation, and actuation. And even though, yes, the, you probably don't need that smart toothbrush, when I look at it, I think, well, that toothbrush certainly has more of those cap capabilities than an old-fashioned one. 